Hi there, welcome to another Stellaris Dev Diary number 97, Tech Progression in, progression in Cherry. H. Well, um, also, <laughs> Humanoids has launched. I'm going to go quickly over the changelog of the Humanoid Species Pack and then go into the bulk of technological progression. Techs are going to change, there are more tiers and uh, the pop tech penalty will fall off, it will be, it will be gone. No more pop tech penalty, rather based on systems and planets. So let's get into the details. Um, so what is the changelog of the humanoid species pack? The features, ship appearance, yeah, new humanoid ship set, 10 new portraits to the humanoid species class, humanoid city graphics, I love that too. Um, added a new pre-scripted empire, the war technocracy, we're going to look at that too shortly. And audios, new soldier advisor voice themed on the Commonwealth of Man, diplomat advisor voice set themed on the United Nations of Earth, a new technocracy advisor's voice set themed on the war technocracy, and three new song remixes, nice. I love the songs, so that's cool for me. <laughs> I've even, I even have favorites. Do you have favorites too? And what are they? Um, bug fixes. There's new bug fixes. That's cool. I I always love bug fixes. Like that's my favorite section. This is all good and on all, but bug fixes are my favorite sections always. Hovering over a category in the tradition screen now works correctly with a non-default UI scaling. Yay! That's actually very good for me because I sometimes play in 4K, record in 4K, and then I always have to take the tradition to see everything. <laughs> That's really awful. And now it's not awful anymore. Yay! Fixes text overflow in governor description in planet view in low resolutions. Also yay for low resolutions. Then fixed create vessel but button missing in low resolution. Hey, it is it's very important to have that being to have that possible in, in low resolution. A lot of people don't care that much about the graphics, they play in low resolution. And it's it's the same fun, so that's very important to fix that. Fixed crash to desktop then can happen during daily war updates. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Fixed localization error when declaring war on awakened empire. Uh, fixed factions in inwards perfection empires referring to diplomacy traditions when they mean adaptability. Oh, yeah, that is good. <laughs> fixed minor break in machine uprising event chain. I think I had that. I think I've experienced that. Then nothing happened for a while, and I was like, "Is there going something going to happen?" But it only, it only increased the tension for me. <laughs> then fixed national purity and native privilege agendas being available for fanatic xenophile empires. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, good. Fixed blurry egalitarian ethics icons when using low graphics quality. Yeah, the icons should be sharp, right? Not blurry. Fixed machine integrated species sometimes not respecting their military service species rights. Good. Updated metadata for the music in Synthetic Dawn DLC to fix an incorrect track name. Ah, yeah, fixing incorrect files is also good. Yeah. Oh, let's see the, the war technocracy. Let's see their story shortly and then technological progression. That's really good. Um, but that's short, so we're going to read it. The war were once a carefree people. They evolved during an extended interglacial period in the lush, temperate woods on their home planet Hiverion, where resources were plentiful. But as the planet began to revert back to a, to a glacial state, they too had to transform to survive. The harsh climate hardened the war and gave rise to an authoritarian technocracy bent on dominating its surroundings through scientific advancement and the acquisition of new technologies. Soon they had conquered their homeworld, but survival came at a steep price for the war people who lost autonomy of both their bodies and minds in the process. To guarantee their submission, their brains were forcibly enhanced with crude cybernetic implants transforming them into willing instruments of science. 
The war's deep-seated contempt for inferior intellects coupled with their need to control make them unwanted neighbors. This is unlikely to bother them, however, as what limited interest they take in other life forms is primarily of a scientific nature. Secretive and calculating, the war prefer to observe the world through the lens of a microscope, carefully plotting out their next step on the path to supremacy. Oh, I'd like to display them. <laughs> on the path to supremacy. <laughs> so now, technological progression. Um, the number of technologies that empires start with has, has been expanded, so you have um, access to some auxiliaries now basic very basic ones the basic orcs slot component in the form of reactor boosters so improving your reactor so giving out more energy so also um, eliminating false choices and have design and counter design available immediately on the game start so uh, you can go broad or you can go specialized from the start and count that too. With missiles moving to a dedicated torpedo slot, <clears throat> the, me the torpedo missile boat Corvette layout is also immediately available and easily upgradable later on. Then they have decided to increase the number of tech tiers in the game to make technological progression a more consistent experience. <clears throat> now, at, at the moment, each technology belongs to a tier between 1 and 4. Probably most people listening to this would know. but <clears throat> So this bases their base cost, right? And uh, so their base cost gets increased by tiers. And yeah, the fourth tier is only used for endgame technologies like mega, mega engineering. Means that technologies with more than three steps, such as reactors, shields, and armor, are spread haphazardly over the tiers. It's not uncommon to have cold fusion research come up as available immediately after researching fusion, for example. To better fit the tiers to the technologies we have, we've decided to increase the number of tiers to five, with the tiers looking roughly like this. So, tier one is basic early game tech, so the ones you get, plus fusion, automated exploration, robotic workers, etc. Tier 2 is um, advanced early game tech, cold fusion destroyers, planetary capital. Tier 3 is basic mid game tech, antimatter cruisers, wormholes, and so on. Yeah, that's also for the new techs, for the new wormhole technologies. Then advanced mid game tech, tier 4, zero point power, which is good for um, galactic wonders. Battleships, Empire Capitals, etc. And Tire 5, absolutely late game wonder tech, Mega Engineering, Ascension Theory, theory and Repeatables, etc. So, uh, a large number of new technologies in the game, both in the form of techs that can handle new features like wormhole stabilization and space trading and improve on existing ones like a line of techs for each ship hull specifically, improves hull points and construction speed. Additionally, change the general progression of ship components so that each upgrade is now more significant. So tech is more significant. Tech has been buffed. For example, blue lasers now offer approximately 30% higher damage than red lasers rather than a mere 10 to 15% as in the current light build. To mean that focusing on technology is now an actual valid alternative to simply massing ships. But we still want to avoid the tech as only viable to path to victory problem that many 4x games suffer from. So, um, there's also some highly advanced tier 6 technologies to fallen empires that cannot be researched normally, now only attainable by scavenging the wrecks of their ships, and maybe also from the space monsters? We don't know. So we have a preview here, matter generation, matter generator high tier and that's a little bit below and look at that starbase upgrade star fortress Ooh, and interstellar warfare that seems like a very oh look at that yeah the fleet command limit <laughs> that's also new like the admiral has a certain fleet command limit he can uh, only command a number of ships a fixed number of ships now an admiral and then you have to go for a new fleet that maybe with or without an admiral, but an admiral now has a fixed number of fleets he can command. So, yeah, 
it's similar to like EU4 where you have at certain points of tech in the game you have uh, you can mass troops but over a certain point it's not uh, advisable anymore. You should split up and go for admirals, more, uh, more um, generals, I mean. So, other thing it changing in 2.0, 2.0 Cherry Age is Technos and the tech penalty, new starbase system and the fact that planets are no longer needed to control space, we felt that the old tech penalty was based entirely on planets and pops, it's overly punitive and strongly encouraged having as few planets as possible and Relying on space-based resources instead. Yes, this was this was the way to go. If you if you wanted to play effectively, so for this reason they've changed the tech and unity penalties to no longer be based on pops. So if you have very big planets that can get a lot of pops on them, or a number of planets in a system, the planet will be much more valuable compared to before. So rather purely on the number of owned planets and systems with own each own system and colonized planet adding to your tech and unity costs and planets overall having less on an impact on tech costs than before so the number of controlled systems is what limits you that is pretty hard too but it re respects um it's probably with respect to bureaucracy and administration that slows tech down instead of yeah if you have all in one place it is easy to administrate if you have all spread out it is hard to administrate and this is what it reflects probably so um going wide has problems but also chances now if you go selectively wide Also raise the base cost of techs, particularly high tier techs, to compensate for the lower penalties and slow down late game tech progression so an empire doesn't have all technologies unlocked within the first century. I love that. I'm also always playing like in, in play, games like Civ 5, I'm playing the epic because otherwise you have a tech and moments later it's over and it's obsolete and you have to upgrade your units. <laughs> like this was always was I what I what I felt uh, was a little bit eh, in 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 Civ that you had when you played on normal it was like and ten turns later you can replace your units again uh, okay <laughs> but they didn't even make it to the to the opponent <laughs> in that time <laughs> so um, this one should not be taken as playing tall now being unfeasible just that it is no longer strictly about keeping few planets yeah there were like keep one planet playthroughs um, that were kind of amusing to watch but also outlying yeah the the design um, weaknesses that they are now correcting so um, yeah Rather limiting, limiting the number of systems you expand to in order to benefit from lower tech unit, unity penalties and the ability to maintain a high ratio of upgraded star bases. So next week's dev diary will be about the fleet manager. That sounds very good. Usability update. I love that. So thank you for watching. Um, if you like this and want to have further updates, just subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please tell me what you think of the planned changes that are very big. I think they are very good changes in that case. And uh, I fully support this change of, of Stellaris. It sounds very good. Of course, one has, has to see in the end how it feels. That is <laughs> the important thing, right? <laughs> But it makes a lot of sense for me. Just a lot of sense. Tech is more important. And it's a little bit easier to tech as a large empire. But on the other hand, you cannot go um, wide without selection. So selection is more important right now. That is what I take from this. And so I applaud it. I think it's, it's good to have selection to be more important as selection is what is fun in in a game so thank you for watching and happy gaming to you this is Imam Makan signing out have a good time till next time